If you have cervical stenosis and it's severe enough that you were told that you need to have cervical spine surgery to fix that problem, pay attention to this. This is important and, and actually may change your life. What I'm going to do is compare and contrast the traditional techniques and traditional technologies that require the use of fusions and screws and rods to fix your stenosis, but it also limits mobility, limits function, and ultimately limits lifestyle after you're treated. With the newer techniques and the newer technology called ultrasonics that allows us to fix your problem, preserve function, preserve mobility, and ultimately allows you to resume the lifestyle that you desire. First, I want to help you understand what you have. What is cervical stenosis? And, and more importantly, why should you care? And what's the reason why you're considering an operation to fix this problem? Well, it happens that cervical stenosis is the most common treatable reason, and I want to emphasize treatable, for adults to lose function in their arms and legs. And neurologic injury as severe as paralysis can develop from severe untreated cervical stenosis. So the reason you should care is because if you have cervical stenosis and it's becoming symptomatic, you can actually lose your ability to walk. So that's why we should care. So what is cervical stenosis and what does it look like? This is a model of the back of the skull and the bones inside the neck. And what it shows, the brain fits into the skull here, and the skull's like a vault that protects the brain from injury. At the base of the skull, there's a hole called the foramen magnum, and the brain essentially continues through that hole. This is an MRI scan looking at that relationship, and this is the base of the skull, and this is the foramen magnum. Anything above this point is brain. Anything below it is spinal cord. They're both extremely delicate and very well protected. A lot of us are sports fans and a lot of us follow the NFL and we follow brain injuries in athletes. And we know that when we bump into the brain, we damage it. We actually lose cells. And if we bump into it enough times, we can actually start having difficulty thinking. Well, if the brain gets bumped into and gets damaged, if we bump into the spinal cord, we can cause similar damage. The damage to the spinal cord doesn't cause us to have difficulty thinking. It causes us to have difficulty walking or doing everything else that we normally do. So how does this actually work and what does it look like? Well, you can see there's a lot of space around the brain and this white stuff is water called spinal fluid. And there's a big channel through which the spinal cord travels. And that cord is in a very well protected space. The spinal cord lives in a channel and the body moves around it. What happens as we get older, we develop arthritis. And arthritis causes joints to expand. If we look at our grandmother's knuckles, they're all larger than our knuckles. And each one of these discs and each one of these joints in the back of the spine can enlarge. And when they do, they start putting pressure on the spinal cord. And that pressure can damage the cord and cause it to eventually lose its ability to function properly. So if we look at what this actually looks like in a, in a real picture, this is a normal cervical spine. And this is a cervical spine where if we look normally at what it should look like, there should be a lot of space. And what we see is these arthritic spurs that are growing into the space that's normally occupied by the spinal cord. And instead of the cord having a lot of room around it, this spinal cord is severely compressed. This is what cervical stenosis is, and that impact to the cord, the same as concussions in athletes, causes cord damage. So how do we fix cervical stenosis? The process of fixing it is essentially the same as reversing the process. So here you see an example where the spinal canal is severely compromised. To fix it, we have to turn it into something that looks like this, where the canal is open, the cord has plenty of room around it, and is protected against the bones bumping into it when we move. So what does that involve? That in involves us having to take something out. And what we have to do is either from the front of the spine remove what's called the vertebral bodies and remove the bone spurs attached to them, or go from the back of the spine and remove structures called lamina. And in the process of doing this, we take out things that are important. These structures that we remove are important structures that actually hold us up. They keep our head in a normal position. They keep us able to move with normal mobility. So in the process of going from here to here, utilizing traditional techniques and utilizing traditional technology, we have to take structure out that normally is necessary for normal function and normal mobility.
This is an example of one of the earliest operations that we use to fix cervical stenosis that is a very effective way to get the pressure off the spinal cord. The problem is when we do a procedure called a laminectomy, we cause a significant issue. And that issue is we cause the individual who has the operation from going from a situation where the head is upright to interfering with the cable system that holds the head up. And what it results in in about one third of the patient is the individual no longer can keep their head in a normal position. So instead of having the head like this, permanently the head is down. And this is a significant issue. This can sometimes be worse than, than the initial problem that we were treating. Significant pain, severe disability. Uh, the operation often causes a problem that was worse than the problem that we were trying to solve. The next iteration in treating this problem is, okay, we're gonna take the structure out that structure that's removed is necessary. It's gonna cause problems holding the head in a normal position. So what we've developed over a number of years since the early 1950s is screw systems, rod systems, fusion systems that allow us to take structure out and rebuild it with screws and rods, either from the front of the neck or from the back of the neck that actually will kind of screw the head back on where it's supposed to be. Very effective at, at solving that problem, but it compromises structure, it compromises mobility. These fusions take bones that normally move independent of one another and essentially glues them together. And what it results in is a lot of things. Number one is loss of mobility, loss of lifestyle, but it also causes stress to be transferred above and below the area that we fix and causes this problem to progress in another location. This next short video is what you've been waiting for. This actually is kind of where the rubber meets the road. What it does is demonstrates the use of traditional cutting tools that we use to remove cervical stenosis, to remove the bone spurs that are pinching the spinal cord versus the use of a new what's called ultrasonic tool that uses high speed vibration that also removes the bone spurs can be used in a much smaller space actually from the inside out and we can take out the stenosis without taking out the important structures that actually hold the head up. So we can avoid fusions, we can do procedures that maintain function and mobility and ultimately lifestyle. So this is a example of a traditional cutting tool that spins fast, it tears and it essentially rips out the bone. When it's used next to something delicate it's actually quite dangerous. Compared with an ultrasonic tool that uses vibration, there's no sharp edges, and it can be used in very small spaces. It's much more powerful, it cuts through bone much more effectively than a traditional tool, but used on something delicate like a balloon or next to a nerve, it's quite safe. If you know how to use this, it's actually quite difficult to pop that balloon. Using it next to something delicate like a, a piece of, of tissue, it also won't damage it. But when I work inside a spine, and this is a, an example of working inside a model with a balloon, with a balloon on the inside. And what this tool can actually do is it can work inside the bone, directly in contact with the balloon, directly in contact with the nerves, remove the bone spurs, remove the stenosis, but not damage the nerves. This is a traditional tool trying to do the same thing clearly the process is much different. So what the new tool allows us to do is treat stenosis from the inside out. We're able to remove the bad stuff and save the good stuff. And functionally, that creates a completely different paradigm in the way we can fix your problem. Well, here's a quick graphic of the traditional technique where we have to essentially take out the pressure from top to bottom. And in order to do so, in this case, we're removing what's called the lamina, or doing a laminectomy. Ectomy means to remove. Well, attached to the lamina, attached to these bones is a cable. That cable holds our head up. And when we do a laminectomy and we remove all of this stuff to reopen the channel, what we've done is detach this cable. And in the process, we take away what holds our head up and the head will fall down. What we then do is replace it with screws and rods either from the front or the back. The reason we put the screws and rods in is because we've taken out that structure that holds our head up. So what is the newer technique able to do? 
What the newer technique does, we don't have to take this out. We can actually make a small access and work under the area where the cord is pinched. So in this picture, instead of removing all of these bones, removing all of the lamina, and taking away the cable system, what we're now able to do is through a small incision, we can work under it. And what we do is we save all the structure. So I can rebuild this channel, but not damage something that needs to rebuild. And the end result is removing the stenosis, protecting the spinal cord, preserving function, mobility, and again, preserving lifestyle and the ability to do the things that you wanted to do after surgery. This also in black and white is an example of the same patient who before surgery, you can see a very narrow spinal canal and after surgery, you can see a very large spinal canal and the spinal cord here has plenty of room and the spinal cord here has very little room. So the difference really is a plastic, a reshaping of the spinal canal done ultrasonically versus an altering of the anatomy of the neck that needs to be rebuilt. This patient will very likely have very good mobility, be able to resume things like golfing and skiing and running, skydiving, anything you want to do, as long as your cord is still functioning well, you can very likely do after this operation without significant restrictions. So if you have cervical stenosis, there's a few things that I'd like you to take away from this presentation. Number one is severe stenosis can cause profound neurologic injury, as severe as paralysis. If you have it, you need to have somebody evaluated that's familiar with the new types of treatments and is also familiar with just how to make the diagnosis and be able to tell you, is this a problem or not? And there are ways that we can actually determine that. Number two, is the ultrasonic techniques offer better options. Treating cervical stenosis with traditional techniques have real trade-offs. Treating cervical stenosis with the newer techniques actually can preserve structures that preserve function, that preserve lifestyle and mobility. The next thing is that if you've had surgery previously, have had a fusion previously, and now we're developing stenosis again, the new ultrasonic techniques really offer much, much better options for being able to fix adjacent level stenosis without doing additional surgery. So what this does is stops you from doing one operation, then another operation, and just constantly chasing your tail trying to get ahead of the problem. The newer techniques decrease the rate of revisions dramatically and are able to fix the problem without additional loss of mobility. Our team at the Cantor Spine Center is here to help. If you've been told that you need to have cervical spine surgery to treat cervical stenosis, give us a call. We'd be glad to provide you with a second opinion. If you have questions, you've been told you need surgery, but you really don't know if you do, we can help you with that. Are you a candidate for some of these new minimally invasive ultrasonic techniques that really provide you with potentially better options? We can help you with that as well. If you're local, stop by. If you're not local, we treat an enormous amount of patients from out of the area and international patients. Telemedicine has made that much easier. We can upload your MRI scan, we can talk to you face to face, and we can make the experience almost as if you're here and really work you through the process. So let us know how we can help. Let's navigate through this process together.